Hello and welcome to Bro Jewel. Today we've got lots of guns and also a couple of new armor mods too. Let's start things off with the M9 pistol. This standalone weapon comes with an all new model and textures, as well as fitting animations to complete the entire package. The gun fits its real life equivalent in both its appearance and its customization options. Depending on your receiver, you can switch between the M9's two modes, semi auto and fully automatic. The pistol utilizes the more common 38 round, and thanks to its modular frame, comes with a variety of moddable pieces. There's a host of new grips, mags, a silencer and three different barrel types. So tweaking the M9 to fit the user is not only possible, it's highly recommended. All in all, the M9 doesn't offer nearly enough firepower for the harsh wasteland, but as a sidearm it's highly reliable. Sticking with guns, and the same mod author, the next weapon is the standalone AK-2047. This fictitious weapon is heavily based on the extremely popular AK-47 rifle, and you'll immediately notice the similarities between the two weapons. Again, this comes with an entirely new model and textures, as well as complete animations, so it all looks and shoots well. The latest update to the weapon offers four brand new barrels that you can use not only to modify the weapon's stats, but to dramatically change its appearance. On top of that, you can choose between several different sights, from a red dot to iron sights, to a completely new sight that's unique to that AK. The AK might not have as many moddable pieces as the M9, but each mod has a bigger effect on the weapon's appearance, whether it's a more snub-nosed urban barrel mod or the dragon marksman mod. The AK is a fan favourite and as of right now, this is the best version of it available, so we're sure a lot of you will want to try it out. For something more American, we have the M2216. The M2216 is another standalone assault rifle from the same mod author. It's heavily based on the M16 rifle and thanks to its highly customisable nature, you can dramatically change the weapon to fit the user. The rifle comes with 7 moddable barrels, along them the more aesthetically pleasing grip barrel, the more classic flat barrel, or the more exotic snub barrel. The M16 is a very popular weapon and seen in many other video games, so regardless of the barrel you choose, the weapon should look familiar. On top of that you can also choose between a mix of different scopes depending on your playstyle, and you can also opt for a pistol grip instead of the original, which is only a minor tweak, but the option is appreciated nonetheless. And finally we have the standalone R91 rifle. Players of Fallout 3 or even Fallout Shelter should recognise this weapon. Just like the others, it's highly customisable thanks to the more recent updates. This time you can mod the weapon to include a variety of new barrels, stocks and sculpts. We think the original and wooden style of the weapon looks great, but you can also mod the weapon to use polymer pieces across the rifle instead. There's also different styles, so again you can dramatically change the weapon so it both looks and feels right for you. Of all the mod author's weapons, this is probably our favourite. We really like the animations and it feels like it could have been in the game all along. All in all, considering it's still early on in Fallout 4's modding lifecycle, these are some great looking and highly customisable weapons. As of right now, the only way to get them is to use console commands, but as soon as we get the creation kit, that'll all change. They aren't perfect and we'd like to see some improvement on the textures, particularly the AK. Even if these particular weapons aren't for you, this is definitely a mod author to keep your eye on. Moving on from weapons, let's have a look at some armours. The Adventurer's Outfit is a new craftable casual outfit that has 6 different variations for you to choose from. There's both a male and female version available, and to craft it simply head to your local chemistry station and you can find it under the utilities category. The outfit itself is completely standalone, so it won't replace any other items in your game, and it has a base defence and rad resistance of 25, plus 2 endurance. The 6 different variants change slight things like the colour of pieces of clothing, and both male and female characters can make full use of any of the 6 variants. We really like how the armour set looks, it's full of small extras included with the armour that really make it unique. And finally, the last mod we have for you today is an armour pack by the name of Eli's Sleeveless Outfits. As you can probably guess, the mod adds 10 new sleeveless armours and outfits to Fallout. To get your hands on them you'll need to install the Crafting Workbenches mod so you can access the Armorsmith Workbench. From there you'll find 5 armours under the armour category and 5 outfits under the casual category. The armours are the ones that come with all the little extra padding, like the backpacks and belts, whereas the outfits are typically just a piece of cloth. There's also a slight variation in their stats. We really like the look of the outfits, and in typical Eleonora style, we love all the little extra touches that really make the sets feel unique. The hanging bits also have physics, which is a nice touch. You can further customise the sets by layering any armour pieces on top of them, but expect some clipping for most sets. On the other side of things, you can also install a tattoo mod to make your character even more unique. And that wraps up another episode of Fallout 4 mods. Everything you need to find and download these mods is down below, and don't forget to endorse any mods that you enjoy. Also remember that you can use the code mods on g2a.com for a discount on cheap games, and thanks for watching.